Hello, everybody. I'm being told I'm supposed to say something, so I'm saying something. <laughs> One, two, three. Yeah, great. Very good. Yes. Thank you. I can give this to you, and I will ask people to sit down. Now. Okay, welcome all. Uh, next, we will have actually two presentators uh, here, and they are Benjamin and Sami, uh, both from Nokia, and I think they will introduce their topic a bit better by themselves. Let's welcome uh, both. Hello, everybody, and thank you for coming. My name is Benjamin. Um, it sure is good to see you guys. Um, uh, both Sam and myself, we are um, we are with the forum Nokia. Myself, I'm based in um, in Finland in Espoo in Nokia House, um, not far from here. Most of you guys probably know where know where it's at. Um, Sam is hiding down here. He will cover the rest of the presentation. Sam is sitting in Espo. I'm very glad that he is with us. And in the back, we have another gentleman with Nokia. Uh, he pretends not to be here, but in the event that you guys have any questions now or later on, Yure sitting back there in the last row, uh, Yure will certainly be able to help you out as well. So there's three of us from Nokia, same team, same unit. Chances are there's going to be some other Nokia people uh, coming in um, during the presentation. Um, Anyway, uh, I mentioned briefly that uh, we all represent Nokia. Uh, let me ask you three very simple, very fundamental questions uh, just to set the stage and know where we are. Uh, by show of hands, I would like you to answer those questions. Very simple thing. Uh, number one is that how many of you know what Nokia is all about? Okay, that's good. How many of you, that's qu second question, how many of you know what forum Nokia is all about? All right, still about 50%, which is good. And the third question, a little bit more challenging, how many of you know what Ovi or Ovi Store are all about? Over 50%, and uh, it's, good, it's good to know. Um, it makes, uh, that's, a good, that's a good indication and it makes sense for us to be here because that's essentially what the presentation is all about. So what I will talk about is brief introduction to what Forum Nokia does, what we're all about, and how we can help you out. Um, then it's a brief introduction to Ovi, what it's all about and how you can utilize some of the tools that it offers and so on and so forth. Number three, Ovi Store in brief, meaning we'll focus our attention on Ovi Store and um, what kind of uh, monetization opportunities is offer, it offers to you guys. And then Q&A. Obviously Q&A is, is structured, you know, is scheduled towards the end of the presentation, but in the event you guys have any urgent questions, please don't hesitate just to, you know, raise your hand and uh, just go ahead and speak up. Um, we, can, we can run it like that as well. Um, okay, let's do it. Um, Forum Nokia overview. Some of you guys might know what we do and what we're all about. I don't know if I can stand like this, but anyway. Um, anyway, essentially what we are and you know, why we're here is that Forum Nokia is Nokia's developer community organization. It's our job to get developers engaged and excited about working with Nokia, developing for Nokia, um, regardless of the platform technology uh, or you know, you know, means of, or architecture, how you want to do that. Uh, typically, um, in the event that you would like to approach Nokia or do business with Nokia and provide a piece of software, an application, service, platform, what have you, you would typically go through Forum Nokia. Um, we have a whole and very comprehensive diversity of tools and technologies and, and support that we can provide to you. And those of you who, um, who, 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 who have been working with Forum Nokia in the past, you know exactly what we're talking about. I don't have it here because I believe it would be, it would be boring and we just don't have enough time to cover all of that. But if you'd like to cover that you know, offline, Yura, Sami or myself will be more than happy to give you a very detailed information about you know, just exactly what kind of tools we support and we have and what kind of support we can provide to you. 
Um, in terms of numbers, we believe we are um, the largest developer community. We have uh, just over 4 million registered users on forum Nokia pages. Uh, it's a very large developer community. Obviously, it means that we cannot work with each, each one of you individual, unfortunately. But we do engage, and it's our job to engage the developer community to the extent possible and you know, work with, with each and every developer who wants to do anything for Nokia or develop anything uh, for Nokia. Um, in terms of business opportunities we offer, um, we offer a lot more than just Ovistore. Obviously, Ovistore, which is our app store, um, it's our primary channel. Uh, when it was introduced, it was very clear that it would be our primary channel. But we also have other opportunities. And those of you who have been working with Nokia, uh, you might be familiar, for example, with Preload, and you know probably what it is. For example, a number of applications on NI7 that just came out, and they are preloaded. And quite naturally, applications are preloaded over in China. They do differ from the applications preloaded in Finland, Sweden, Germany, the US, and so on and so forth. So, uh, each and every device um, will differ in terms of the application preloaded on that device depending on you know geographical position location and so on and so forth which in return it creates unique opportunities to each one of you because even though you sit in Finland or Sweden or in Germany or in Asia it really doesn't matter where you are you can be preloaded on one of those variants and how exactly how it goes and so on and so forth again you there myself or Sami will be will be more than happy to walk you through the process and tell you exactly how it works we also work with operators and this slide presents only a few of them we work with you know all of them globally um, and we do promote your applications to them in various ways. And just exactly how it works, we will be more than happy to talk about it uh, later on as well. Um, introduction to OV, I'm going pretty quick because I understand we don't have a whole lot of time. That's why I would like to cover most of the presentation and then address your questions. Introduction to OV. Um, the way we defined OV and what OV is all about is nicely, I believe, nicely illustrated on this slide. Essentially, what it comes down to is that OV is a platform. It's a developer platform that provides tools for you guys to develop on. And then you might be wondering why this is empty. Well, let me explain really quickly. The way we define OV for now is that OV comprises those you know, numerous services, such as games, maps, media, messaging, music. So that's essentially what OV means to us. It, it, inv it, it comprises all those services. Now, the reason why this is empty is that we would like operator, third party, or you developers, in a way, fill out that gap or you know, provide whatever services, whatever, whatever um, you know, applications, games you guys have, and we will not be screening um, against that content. So that's where it is. That's how we define it, but how you define it, and what kind of services, applications you would like to feed into the system, it's entirely up to you. We'll give you the tools for different technologies and different you know, web runtime, Java, and so on and so forth. And then what you do with all of that, it's entirely up to you. We'll help you, you know, promote it, monetize it, and so on and so forth. That's our job. And we have a very comprehensive, I mean, very, very, um, very, um, you know, nicely and well-built well organization behind us to make all of that happen. Now, um, the interesting thing about Avi proposition is essentially two, two unique factors to it. The, the previous slide indicates that there is multiple elements, games, maps, and so on and so forth. And obviously, different people, or for different people, different elements will have different appeal. And that's what this, this slide illustrates. I mean, some people are very much into navigation. And then, for example, you are sitting in the back. He knows just about anything about it, how exactly it works, and what you can do with Nokia in terms of navigation. But for some people, for example, music or photography or games makes a lot more sense. And that's what they are into. You know, some consumers might have, obviously, the consumers have different preferences, and that's what it's all about. So that's one unique offering or unique, you know, unique um, thing about Ovi. In addition to that, Ovi offers a very interesting social or um, you know, viral aspect to it, meaning the, for different applications, you will be in a position or consumers will be in a position to, uh, to recommend those applications. And just, just exactly how it works and what it's all about, we'll be more than happy to take it offline as well. Um, 
Now, obvious story in brief, and I, th I have a feeling that most of you guys, that's what you are here for, that you would like to know what Ovi story is all about, how to monetize, and, and how it all works. And um, that's what this part of the presentation is all about. So Ovi story is our primary distribution channel for all types of content. It could be one of the elements that I outlined before, meaning you know, music, uh, maps, and so on and so forth, but it's not limited to that. And that's what it is nicely presented on this slide. I mean, it, it could be application, it could be a, a very serious business application, but it doesn't need to be. It's entirely up to you what kind of application, what type of content or service you would like to upload. We will make it happen. We will work with you uh, to make sure it's as smooth as reasonably possible transition and upload uh, process. Um, what's interesting is that quite naturally both free and premium content are available, meaning if you decide to uh, distribute your application free of charge, you can do that. If you want to charge for that, we'll, we, we, that's obviously okay as well. And um, in terms of revenue share, it's 70, 30, 70 obviously in your favor. That's how it's structured. And naturally it will differ if it's operator billing, but it's something that unfortunately Nokia does not control. It's regulated by a certain national local legislation um, and we pretty much have to, um, well, we have to obey those principles. It's just something we, that we cannot control. Um, we offer worldwide, literally world, worldwide distribution of those applications or services. And um, you are in control over what type of devices, what type of markets, what type of languages, what type of you know, variants you would like to address. So we'll give you the tool it's a completely self-service. You get to select if it's, I know, for those of you who know, you know more about devices and so on and so forth, you get to choose if it's S40 or S60 or MAMO devices. What it's all about is entirely up to you. We will not interfere. For, for those of you who would like to consult us um, about what type of application should be presented and where, we'll certainly be available. But if you, choose, if you choose not to do so, then you are in control. We give you the tools and you get to do whatever you want. Um, so, brief summary, um, from Nokia we are um, a developer community, it's our job to make your efforts um, as, as, as efficient as reasonably possible in terms of distribution. Um, OV is a developer platform which offers you a lot of very comprehensive set of tools and technology to develop and to complete and to distribute your application and OV Store is the sort of de facto um, distribution mechanism, distribution tool that we promote and that we maintain. And now I can, eat, I can either take a couple of questions right now or if you'd like to wait a little, um, I can do it after Sami's presentation. But if you have some questions right now, I'll be more than happy to, uh, um, to do that. I don't know if there's going to be a microphone going around or uh, you can just, I mean, there's not a whole bunch of us, so you can just shout. Question, there is a gentleman, yeah. I guess you're going to get a microphone anyway. Yeah, regarding regarding uh, games and how many how many the top selling games are selling there through Ovi? Currently? There is a lot of games. I would hesitate to give you specific numbers because it depends on the device and market. But there is a lot of games. Yeah, I mean, what what are the top selling selling games? I mean, uh, from developer perspective, of course, you need to know the business opportunity. So, how much if you if you would do a game? How much you would expect to have unit sales trail through? Well, it I, again, I would I, I would hesitate to give in a specific numbers because it entirely you know it also depends to on you. I mean, if you decide to publish you know across the board in all the markets, then you obviously volumes will be, will be very significant. It's if it's available in multi multi -lang, multiple languages, it's it it's on a case by case basis. I mean, I can tell you that you know it's currently Store is available on 75 devices, and it's it's growing by day by day. So in terms of if you multiply, if you if you do the math and multiply it by by Nokia's uh, you know volumes, that should give you some indication what kind of numbers we're talking about. Well, that's why I'm asking. I don't have any indication. We can take it offline. Okay, I have a question about the software development kit for games. So we got that at the beginning of this year and implementing it was quite a big task, very, very 
uh, takes a lot of time. There was very many steps and uh, certification things and like that and like that. So would it be easier for a developer just get the SDK and to get to develop? Yeah, without knowing specifically what SDK you are referring to. Engage. Okay. Um, well, obviously there is room for improvement and Sami will cover some of that. So I, I would suggest in terms of that question we can probably wait because Sami will present some, some of the new and pretty cool technologies which I be or we believe are not so time consuming and, and are not so, you know, do not demand so, so, so much technical knowledge or technical know-how. So it should or it, it, it will definitely get easier. Other questions? Yep. There's two more in the back. Hey. Uh, which browsers and which uh, operating system are supported for downloading application and other stuff? For downloading applications? Yeah. Or, uh, uh, and also which web browser are supported? I'm not sure if I understand the question. From Office Store, if you want to download the application from yeah. Office Store? Yeah. Then pretty much, if you want to do it online, then any, pretty much any browser is supported. Mm -hmm. If you want to do it online on your PC, yeah. to download the application. Okay. And then afford to, to download the application on the actual device, then we have a client that installs on a device, and that's it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hi, Christopher from Squared. Um, um, well, I, I might have missed it, but what is the process for acceptance on, on the store? Yeah, that's is it something similar to the iPhone kind of thing? That that's, a, that's a good question. I'm glad you mentioned that. Um, there is a process. Um, in terms of registration, you need to have a business ID, but the process as such is pretty straightforward. It's pretty simple. And if you haven't, you know, we, 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 can, we, can, we, can, we, can, we can discuss that in detail later on. But essentially, um, it's a very simple process. You just need to register to get a, a publisher ID. And, um, and then you are ready to publish. There is obviously for Java applications, it needs to be Java verified application, and for Symbian, it needs to be Symbian signed. Uh, but for the, the kind of technologies that Sami will talk about, no verification or no authorization process is necessary. Sami will cover that in more detail, what it's all about and how we believe it makes your life a lot easier. Then again, it goes back to your question about SDK. All right, um, why don't I just hand over to Sami because I guess we're about 50-50 right now. So um, Sami will, uh, will do the rest. Thank you, Ben. Uh, spare me with me for a second so that we can swap the... Okay, so welcome, very warm from my side as well. So my name is Sami Viitan and I'm working as a senior technical consultant on Forum Nokia. Uh, we don't have very much time to cover topics like Office Store or, or development, uh, developer offering, so uh, I hope that some of you can, can join us afterwards and have a conversation if you have more detailed information in your minds that you want to share with us. Uh, but in, in a nutshell, my idea here in a bits and pieces Nokia developer offering is to give you a big picture what's the uh, thinking currently on the Nokia side, Forum Nokia visions, how the developer relationships would be handled and what, what we can offer to the developer. And, what's the ideology behind that, and also cover up uh, a little bit about the cute, which, which is something that uh, in the future you probably want to take a little deeper look if, if we think about it in general. So let's go through a couple of slides first, uh, and then I will move on to a small cross-platform demo for the Qt uh, UI and application framework. So uh, if we consider now the three aspects that uh, basically can be defined when, when we talk about the developers from, from Nokia point of view, I guess that we could first say that we currently 
uh, split the developers into two different categories. So there are sort of application developers or game developers. And then we have these web developers, which, which uh, naturally have a little bit different setup of tools and, and a little bit different setup of uh, environments or run times, as, as we say. And I'm focusing here on, on these few slides more to the application development side. So that's why this is actually on the slide listing a couple of uh, application uh, stuff like the Qt. So that's something that we are quite heavily focusing on. It's a, it's a new thing on, on our devices and S60 is kind of a spearhead for this technology at the moment. So that's, that's where we are stepping into the world of Qt application and UI framework. Idea naturally here is that uh, uh, on our cross-platform vision, uh, we want to think about what's the effective and what's the good thing for the developer. Uh, what you want to do is most likely money, and you want to make it easy. And that's where we are focusing to. If we think about those things that uh, are still, at least in some extent, existing, like a uh, lot of work uh, when you put up an environment, that's naturally something that every one of you, if you're familiar with the Nokia tools and, and then on our competitors' tools, we have a lot to learn there and we are doing work for that uh, every day. And uh, I think that at least in some areas we have quite nicely improved on there. A uh, couple of years ago, Nokia was purely a device company and now the big guys are saying, uh, couple of times ago that uh, now we're the internet company, we are focusing on services and that's something that Nokia is not used to and, and we got our lessons to learn, but that's what we are working on and we are doing here today. So uh, cross-platform vision, it's the idea that uh, when you do something, for example in a, in a platform like S60, you could utilize also on other platforms. So we have a commitment that we have uh, announced that the Qt will be part of uh, Series 40. We have already a community port for the MIMO devices. So basically, when you create something for one platform, you can utilize the very same code on other platforms. And Qt is nice. It extends all the way to the to the world of desktop as well. So uh, it's, it's quite nice thought from that point of view. And what I will show you later on a little bit about the big picture of Qt and then a, a small demo, as I said. Symbian still definitely uh, on, on the push. I mean, on the smartphone side, Symbian OS is, is having a biggest market and uh, it has a lot of capabilities. You can really do uh, very nice things from there. I think that our learnings there, our actions there to get the Symbian out there to the open source with the Symbian Foundation is a very good thing. More open we are towards the developer, the more innovation we will get. The developers can though, uh, get those codes in their hands and they can really get everything out from the S60 uh, and Symbian. That's, that's a good thing, I think. Uh, Java and Flash, again, covering uh, that cross-platform idea. You know that Java is a very, very uh, widely used and, and a lot of devices, a lot of platforms uh, where you can run the Java programs. Also in the Nokia, Nokia side, this is Series 40 is very heavily uh, with the Java and, and so is the S60 devices. So that's definitely one of those. And again, Flash. There is a lot of guys doing work with the Flash technology on the website and now bringing that competence to the, to the mobile devices is something that we are working on and trying to provide as nice path as possible. I think that with our runtimes, Java, Flash, Web Runtime, uh, Symbian, Qt, the great thing is that when you have your competence on no matter what's the area that you have it, it's always there and you don't have to swap everything uh, behind you and learn something uh, very new. All you have to do is take your competence, check the bits and pieces which are related to the mobile development uh, 
There are things like uh, smaller screens, uh, but also the good things like uh, access to the platform features like location, messaging, uh, networks in general, or, or stuff like uh, end user contacts. So that kind of information is, is very efficient and bringing a lot of good stuff there. Uh, not talking about the distribution that much, been covered a couple of slides already from that one. So we could discuss what would be the thing. If you figure out what's the future investment on, on mobility side, here is one possibility and, and it's the queued. Because there you really cover a lot of stuff just doing with a single code in a very best possible scenario. Okay, the role of the forum Nokia has been probably already a little bit covered. We are the part which is there for the developer. We are the interface for the Nokia. We are uh, gathering together tools, different kind of services, and then also uh, services like uh, technical consultancy or, or discussion ports, which are free for everybody, wiki pages, and, and the documentation telling you about the development and, and tools and stuff like that. So there's a lot of, lot of things there on the forum Nokia. Not going to the web page structure at the moment, but uh, you find there are a lot of things. Okay, before going to the demo, we go through three slides. One is about the Java, one about the Flash, and then the Qt slide, giving you the big picture. And uh, on the Java, as I already said, we have a lot of devices out there, and we can say that it's sort of a reuse point of view, the best uh, code and, and investment reuse at the moment. So when you do things with Java, you can use it in, in a lot of masses, and you get a really strong uh, base of, of devices there. Nowadays, it's, it's powerful. Uh, guys have been doing a lot of work there. Uh, we had a challenges uh, just uh, about a year ago when the resolution on our devices screens exploded and, and Java needs to do a lot of work to make, make that look still good. For example, in the gaming side, and uh, we are still working on the performance issues. We're adding the APIs. We have the sensor API, which was a uh, long asked feature for the Java side. Uh, we have a independent application delivery, which is a really good thing from the Java point of view. Now, the specific Java release is not anymore bind to the specific platform release, but end user can actually update the Java part of the device independently. Just going to the application menu, selecting the software update icon, and getting the new version of Java inside. So bug fixes, performance improvements, new APIs, all that kind of stuff is then, then again in their hands. Uh, flashlight uh, is something that uh, is very compelling in a way that uh, the graphical approach is, is naturally something that the end user are definitely looking for. And, and with the flash, you can create uh, very nice looking, graphically appealing uh, applications on, on the mobile side as well. And uh, it's, it's fast to code, so it is giving a nice uh, speed uh, and time to market, and uh, naturally, the features on the flash side have been improved all the time as well. So we are now moving in the world of Flashlight 3, which basically means that uh, you can embed now the video in, in the browser, meaning that, uh, for example, using the YouTube doesn't need to be anymore so that the separate player is launched for the content, but it can be embedded on the website. Or we can think about the platform services. The same set of services that we have on the web runtime side are accessible via the flash, uh, meaning that you can actually uh, get the location from the platform features uh, from the uh, flash code via the action script, or you can access the contacts of the end user, uh, making a real uh, 
uh, hard binding to the end users uh, from the social networking point of view and stuff like that. So it's it's really nice there. Okay, but let's go to the cute part then. Uh, if you have a competence related to the Java or, or standard web technologies or, or Flash, most likely you want to take that path. But if you're figuring out to, to go some new areas or, or you have uh, any competence on that area of the Qt UN application framework, that's definitely something that is worth looking for because idea here is that uh, when we release the final version of Qt for S60 in a Q4 of this year, it basically means that as it's based on, on 4.6 Qt, everything that is in there will be on the S60 port as well. So no matter what kind of a stuff you're coding for your desktop, you can now easily switch to the mobile environment, just compile the code uh, for the S60, and uh, then you have uh, possibility to utilize the mobile features. There is actually a project called uh, Qt Mobility going on, which is bringing a new APIs related to the mobility also on, on, the, on the desktop side, or let's say that in the core uh, Qt functionality. But uh, at the moment, the case is so that we have at the forum Nokia uh, so-called mobile extensions. So we have a set of uh, nine, if I recall right, platform service which you can easily use via the Qt kind of API. So you just take the package from, from the Forum Nokia website, put it on top of your S60 uh, SDK, which has the Qt, and then you can utilize those mobile uh, services, for example, getting the location for your application. Uh, one nice thing here is uh, at least for some somebody, uh, is that we have these set of new tools. So we have currently uh, experiments related to the Carbide and uh, uh, also the Code Warrior. But now the Qt Creator is bringing sort of a cross-platform IDE, which you can use everywhere. And, and I would see that one of the great things here is that uh, you can now focus on developing for example, in, in your PC desktop, uh, you can make a round time of the development and testing uh, quite much faster, and then you can just move to the S60 environment and make the final adjustments, uh, final uh, mobile uh, thingies on that side and, and start doing things from, from that point of view. Okay, but hey, let's let's take a look. A couple of details now related to this cross-platform idea. So, what is my demo about? Uh, in simple, I have a very small proof of concept game application here. So it's the Bricks game, uh, and uh, I have developed it on the Mac environment using the Qt Creator for Mac. That's the tool, the IDE, which is available for Windows and the Linux as well. It really doesn't matter. I have just a couple of classes there, and the game is, is really very simple. So if I, if I compile and show it to you, it's like this. Just a very simple game, having a moving ball there. OK. Uh, what my idea is now is that I want to take the source files that I've used here on my Mac uh, to the S60 and on the Windows side, where I have the N97 SDK, and I've installed the Qt SDK on top of that. And I will take the source files, compile it for the S60, and try it on the emulator. So let's try to do that. So I basically cleaned the build so I can have a, a clear vision there for the, for the source codes. Uh, 
And I have a Parallels running on my Mac. Uh, that's probably the reason why there was a couple of hiccups on, on the Mac side application, even though that it isn't used so much uh, energy on there. So I will take those files and copy it to the Windows side, where I had the S16 environment up and running. Okay. So now I have basically four files uh, on, on the Windows side, pure source of that application developed on the, on the Mac side. And I will go now to the comment prompt and let's compile this now on the S60 emulator. Okay, so what's the case on Qt for S60 is that we actually have just the application and UI framework on top of the S60. So I'm still basically doing S60 Symbian application. I just have additional set of libraries which are actually consisting everything that is included on the Qt. In this case, it's the pre-release pre version of the Qt uh, based on 4.5. This is available for everybody, but uh, functionality is not 100% so far because it's the pre-release. Okay, so let's now try to find the emulator. Nice. So I have now the bricks demo there on the on the emulator and we can take a look how it how it goes so it looks very very similar it, it's it's run on the emulator now okay so i'm happy with that now and we can move on to the next step so i can go on and compile it now for the actual device So I'm basically going now from platform to platform. From the Mac, I compile it and run it. Then I go to the Windows environment and the S60 SDK, compile and run it. And now I'm compiling it for the native S60 so we can try to install it on the real device and see what happens. So next step now that I have the binaries is that I create the sys package. So I have a command here ready on the Qt installation which can help me on that. So it's called a create package. And what it does is that it uses the BTK file in a very similar way that we did on the Symbian development and create the sys package. So let's see if we actually have it here. Yes, we have it here. So I'm moving again to the, the Mac side and then move it to the, to the device. Okay. Now we're connecting. Sorry, don't have a Bluetooth on. Let's put it on. I would show you uh, the demonstration on there as well then, after if I switch the Bluetooth. Okay, let's try again. Now it looks better. Okay, so I receive it, and let's change the input again. Okay, so now you get a picture from the device. So I've uh, transferred the application binaries now 
uh, to the device and, and let's make the installation. What is thing to understand here in addition that we are now still on the pre-release phase on, on the development point of view is that actually also uh, the devices are not yet having the Qt libraries. So what I have done is that I've downloaded from, from Nokia Qt pages the Qt library binaries to here as well so that it works here. Uh, we will have naturally on the future uh, that kind of a thing also available on on our devices pre-installed. But that's, that's the idea there. And uh, if I now wanted to create something mobile specific here, for example, the controlling of the bar with the uh, changing of orientation, I can do it with a, let's say, three lines of code on, on CPP level, opening uh, the channel to the accelerometer, uh, using the values from there to control the bar and then closing it when, when distracting, and that's it. And uh, naturally, this is something that uh, you can download from the forum Nokia site, so this application is available on, on Q4S60 there. But I guess that that sums the idea quite nicely that we were moving from the platform to platform, and, and that's exactly the idea that we are running that you don't have to code too much from changing from S60 to MIMO or, or from the PC world. Naturally, the ideas are different and UIs are different, but the main code can be, can be very, very same. Okay, but that's basically my evangelism this time. So if you have any question, please shoot me. Time for a few questions. Yeah. Um, hi, Christopher again. Um, are, are you pl planning to um, have like an emulator or SDK environment uh, available for the Mac, or is it always going to be switching between Windows and, and Mac? I, I only ask because I know that for your demo, I mean, it's the like the hypothetical situation is that you could run the same thing on multiple pl platforms, but in reality, you're going to need to connect to quite a lot of stuff on the device. And I assume that that's not going to be available in the Qt environment that you were running on the Mac. Uh, the APIs. Uh, yeah, exactly. The like accelerometer or other like sort of mobile APIs. Actually, the Qt mobility is, is exactly that. So, so they are bringing basically those APIs that are currently on the forum Nokia mobile extensions. For example, the accelerometers uh, to the to the Qt as a, as a core functionality. But uh, you're still right, uh, only Windows-based uh, environment is, is not a good thing, and I'm, I'm sure that we have uh, realized that as well, and uh, it's on the roadmap. <laughs> uh, hi. Actually, my question is related to the last thing that you said about the Windows-based environment. Uh, what I wonder is, is it really just, does that thing compile on Windows and on no other platform? Because you had to copy the files from Mac to a Windows, and if it's required, then it doesn't mean if, you're, if I'm developing on Mac, because in the end, I'm not developing on Mac. I mean, why would I need to copy the files? Uh, I'm not sure if I understand your question, but uh, uh, if you change the platform, for example, from, from the Mac to Windows, you're making a Qt application. You have to compile that application again for the Windows. No, no. What I was asking is, uh, you com you copied the files to Windows to be able to compile the application. Yeah, for exactly. The, yeah, but do I need to do that each time I want to compile something? Uh, if you have a Mac and Parallels, or what kind of a situation are you meaning now? Well, I mean a situation where I don't have access to Windows at all. Is uh, yeah, yeah. If you don't have access to Windows currently, you can't compile for S60. Okay, that's what so, I was. Asking. So yeah, the environment for S60 is currently only Windows. Yeah, that's correct. One more question, perhaps. Okay. So if I want to make games for 
Nokia phones. What do I need? Is it just QT and that's all? What do you mean? <laughs> so I mean, do I need uh, still engage SDK or is that dead now? Or what's the point? Uh, actually, I'm I'm not the right person to justify what, what is what is dead and and what is not. Uh, I think that at least from from Qt, uh, it's a general thing. So if you have done uh, coding for Qt, the games, the game engine, stuff like that, it's definitely a good option. Uh, on, on that case. Uh, I'm not that familiar of, of the NKG environment, but I would assume that it has specific APIs which uh, you can utilize to make, make a games very specific for the S60. But uh, this is a bigger picture. You don't have to focus so much on the single platform, even though the S60 is very strong and you have a lot of devices out there. With the Qt, you can get even, even more mass uh, if the motto of Qt is code less, uh, how was it? Code less, deploy everywhere. Well, anyway, the, the idea is that you, you gain more with uh, less effort with the Qt. OK, hey, thanks a lot. If you have any additional questions, uh, some of you might even uh, catch my email from the first slide, so be free to send me a message. Thanks a lot. <laughs>